Well, folks, welcome to the 2023 Farm Progress Show. So we're a little late after a few wrong turns. Show's just starting a little after 8 o'clock. See what we can find here on the showgrounds. You, you turned everywhere the GPS told you. You just punched in the wrong address. Well, yes, I yes. I told you we was going the wrong way. never heard of Farm Progress Show. It's one of the largest outdoor shows in the United States. We come to it every year. So, let's see what the latest and greatest the show has to offer is. Questions. Do you know what that you pulled in for now? I pulled it in a satellite inflation system. Okay. It's called this is a 69. And it also included the first year for the tires on the track. So we're at the Massey booth. And here is a 1924 Gleaner. So they're celebrating 100 years of Gleaner. There is a 2000 or a 1923 Gleaner in existence left, but uh, that one was un unable to make it to the show, so they have a 24 from Mary Equipment in Jeffersonville, Ohio. Local place to us. Gleaner Combine, $6,300. Apparently in 1959. So yesterday we came in and did some scouting, and one thing we seen that we want to check out is the next at Combine, and it's, it's right down the road here. It's right here. And it's early in the show and no one's here, so we're gonna do it now. How do you say it? Next hat. Next hat? Next hat. Not next hat? No, not next hat. Well, there she is, in all for glory. Boy, Dad, I don't know if you can get in the seat in that one. I know exactly how you feel, Dad. So walk around Farm Progress, one of the things that we were really excited to see was a Nexat Combine. So I'm here with Jason Faulkner from Nexat, and Jason, you mind telling us a little bit about the uh, about the machine here? Yeah, uh, so the Nexat is sold and distributed by Terra Camp in the United States, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of uh, Nexat. Nexat's 50 feet wide in the field, 50, uh, 10 feet wide going down the road, so we can go from field to road or road to field in 10, 10-15 minutes. Yeah. Change positions. I know one thing looking at the machine is really unique about it. Obviously the whole thing pivots, correct? Yep. I mean yep. that's a combine and it's the whole machine is fifty feet wide. It's pretty pretty interesting design. Yeah. We have uh, about five or six different attachments uh, for it. We have a harvester, we have the planter, we have the tillage, we have uh, crop protection. Crop and all that is controlled by one chassis, correct? Yeah, one chassis. So like this whole combine machine behind us drops off the mainframe yep. and then you just hook another. Yeah, we uh, unhook it and realistically it's going to take you about a half hour to switch from uh, one implement to the other. It takes me that long to switch from heads sometimes. <laughs> so. Uh, so to go from harvesting to planting, if you're going to put down a cover crop, it's you know, morning you'll be planting by noon after you get your crops in and all that type of thing. Okay. Uh, one thing I noticed, like the tires on this machine are massive. Yeah. Is this for compaction purposes? Is that the whole concept of the machine is just how wide it is to... It, it's to reduce compaction. What we're, The main goal of the machine is to be farming on controlled traffic. Okay. Most controlled traffic uh, fields are 10 feet wide between the... Uh, passes. Uh, passes. Yeah. What we're doing is we're running on uh, 45 feet passes. So when this machine passes. turns around, that tire is going north, will be going south in the same tire tracks, yeah, basically. Exactly. Okay. So we're, what we want to do is drive on those same tracks all the time, no matter if we're planting or spraying or harvesting, uh, doing tillage, it's always on those same paths, which you'll hopefully never drive over the field again. Okay. So you, yeah, that would be pretty critical. I mean, at least yeah. in our soil types, I mean, that would be huge. Yeah. Every farm farmer does not want to drive on their field but they feel like they, I mean they have to because yep. there's no other way to do it and we're hoping that this would this or we know this will reduce it than the having to yeah um, just looking at the machine itself like first thing I see when I get up here is like well how do you get in the darn thing yeah. I mean is there is that I'm guessing that all pivots and drops yeah, down to yeah. get in the cab the cabs in its uh, harvesting position basically so you can watch the whole head you can look inside the grain tank and see how full it is if you want to get up there and look. It's a thousand bushels. Uh, grain tank and load in a minute and 15 seconds. That's a lot of deer yeah. food. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, to get in and out of the cab, it, uh, it'll come go up and down for for you. Okay. And, and, road, and in road position, it 
points forward so you can see where you're going down the road. It's all designed, uh, we have all the autonomous stuff in it, so it can be autonomous, but, but it's not going to be 100% autonomous because harvesting, you got to watch for the feeder house plugging up and yeah, you got to right. be there to unplug it. So one thing like I would wonder about, like looking at it being on this side of the machine, how are you seeing this side of the machine? Is there a lot of cameras or something well, in it? There's, there are cameras positioned, though. There's uh, eight cameras positioned around the machine, but it, it's, it's a pretty good view. I mean, it, it's amazing that from one end of the machine, you can look 50 feet down and actually see the other end and see what's going on. Okay. okay. The machine itself, what, what's power in this machine? What kind of engine and I guess what's the horsepower rating? The, the horsepower is at uh, 1100. It's two 550 horsepower engines okay. right now. Um, currently, they're Liebherr engines. We're looking at if there's better options for the United States okay. uh, that the American farmer will accept better. Okay. Uh, from from the engine, it goes to an electric generator, which sends electricity to the rest of the machine and also down to the drive wheels. The drive wheels are powered. So it's by, not hydrostat then. It's electric drive. It's an electric drive. Okay. So okay. we're using if we. For the have the full hundred horse uh, percent of the engine working, we're probably only working fifty percent of those electric motors. Okay, probably so, a little bit more torquey that way too. Yeah. I'm guessing the yeah, hydrostat. Is. Yeah. So is gearing off the main header platform uh, yeah. offered with it? Or? They'll, they'll be there. Are supplier for corn heads. Okay. okay. Um, I think every YouTube video I've seen out running, it was this exact setup. Yeah, so that's, yeah. yeah. And, but I mean, we we, we can't uh, dictate people. Yep. On which heads they run so so it is it, built to adapt to any yeah we, okay. we have adapter plates for gotcha if okay. you have your case corn head and i think the main problem is going to be finding a 45 foot corn head yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. okay yep. do you mind showing us the back of the machine yeah, though so basically the grain looks like it's coming in through that feeder house and dumping into this rotor yep yep it's a rotor that runs the whole length of the machine um when the grain comes in from the feeder house it splits in each direction so what we have is basically two combines in one after the feeder housing uh it goes from it goes from the rotor out to the uh yeah, i seen there was two cleaning systems one yeah. on each of the machine yeah and so we have on each end we have the uh, chopper knives and then we have the threshing system that's getting out the chaff so it's pretty pretty simple with one rotor and split in each direction should it's about double the capacity of uh, your S-Series combines. Yep. So up here, this is just the grain tank itself right here, right? Yep. Did yep. you say it was a thousand bushel? Yeah, it's a thousand bushels. Wow. So this is how you swap out for different yep. Yep. different attachments for the, for the frame itself? Yep. yep. Okay. So, yep, pretty interesting. So there's one of these on the same other yep. end of the machine yep. too, correct? On, one on each end. And we... Uh, this is this would be up like the one down there is to catch everything and comes down to the oh, okay blowers. so this is just like a service yeah in excess so that's what it would look like in yep. field in operation field. okay and we're we're catching all the chaff and everything and blowing it forward <laughs> underneath the machine blowing it that way and a little bit that way oh okay you're blowing it up in front of the machine yeah well and then uh the, the stuff that comes through the chopping knife right off the rotor is blowing out there and that's what this is supposed to represent this path. oh okay okay Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, Jason, I appreciate the yeah. tour of the machine. Yeah. So that is the first combine that is truly completely different that I've ever seen from conventional machines. It's very interesting. Very interesting. Show's starting to get busy. So, Doug, do you have any advice for my brother on running a uh, four scrubber? <laughs> what, what are your secrets? Don't, don't, don't squeeze the handle so tight. What I mean, it likes a soft grip. <laughs> slow, slow the speed down. Slow the belt down. Slow the speed down and change the drop point. Auto dock, eh? Our live demonstration of the auto dock here on the Ideal Combine. Drive in and hook up in a matter of seconds, which Kevin's going to demonstrate here in a minute. So the auto dock is a factory installed option uh, that will come with the combine and the headers. Uh, you can have it with the, the gearing hall corn head, uh, with the Agco draper head, as well as the Agco corn head. So it is a factory installed option for those products.
So he's picking up the head, he'll bring the head up to a, a fair height, and then he'll push the button in the cab. So as Kevin pushes the button, you'll see our hydraulic coupler come out, couple up the hydraulics and electronics at the same time our PTO coupler comes out and hooks up the PTO shaft on both sides. When this happens, it's actually rotating, and so it's sensing the speed on the header, so we know that the header is locked up and the combine's ready for operation. How long did that take, Kevin? I don't know, 10 seconds, maybe? Yeah. It didn't take very long, did it? That's all there is to it. There you go, and now you're ready to go to the field with it. Hello. How do you do? Hello. <laughs> Gavin, you figured out how to get that in your bag yet? I need like I six of these in my life. <laughs> <laughs> They'll fix you right up. That's what they told me anyways. We just got done meeting and greeting. Driving around before the show closes for the day. Look at two benches. So what's the benefit of the swivel drawer? It's a weight deal. It's a 450 pounds. Done one inch gap, greasable. Okay. It's simple, nothing wear out. Yep. So one interesting thing noticing at the Farm Progress show is there's a Massey Ferguson sprayer on the lot. Here, yes, so. absolutely. Um, Heath, you might tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so the, the Massey Ferguson sprayer that we've got behind us is, this is our uh, MF530, which is an 860 gallon uh, product tank with 100 foot booms, uh, 59 inch crop clearance with liquid logic. So a high spec machine for a grower and entry level, uh, you're getting a lot of features um, standard uh, with boom height control, boom clean out, uh, boom recovery, all sorts of great features that that others have to option up to to get to our level. Okay. Yeah. So with uh, with this Massey, is this a new launch for this year then? Yes. Yeah, in, so in North is, America. This is new for uh, 2023. Uh, the machine has actually been running in South America uh, for about the last eight years, so it's got a lot of runtime on it, a lot of success. We actually have 600 retailed units in South America right now, so a lot of success. Uh, so we're really excited. This is the first time for uh, Massey Ferguson in the row crop world to be able to give the farmers a full solution from uh, soil prep all the way to harvest. So okay. it's a great time for us to be able to bring uh, straightforward, dependable solutions to our, our clients, uh, old and new. So it, it's great. Okay. All right. Um, as far as different boom options, everything uh, is 190. Is that the two options are it? Correct. So we have 90 and 100 foot uh, currently right okay. now. Uh, we definitely want to step into a little bit uh, bigger range at 120 foot. Uh, but we know for the areas that this machine is going to launch in uh, for this first year, 90 and 100 is going to fit ideally. Okay. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate you showing us around a little bit. Thank you, Brian. Yep. So this is day two of Farm Progress and just catching up with a fellow I haven't seen in a few years, Arthur Santos. Arthur, good to see you again. Good to see you, man. Yep. So Arthur and I uh, got to know each other a little bit on some Fent Momentum stuff. Uh, that was like three years ago. Three years ago, 2020 and I think 2021. It's yep. been a while. Yep. So this morning when I walked in, there was a, I assumed it was a Fent Momentum because it was a planter hooked to a Fent tractor and it was covered in a black tarp. So, or a black sheet, I guess. Yeah. So, what, what's going on here? So, we were unveiling. It was the first time that North America saw the 30-foot version of Momentum. It carries all the benefits and all those cool ergonomical design features, but it has a different design. So, we wanted to cover it and do an unveiling. Yesterday morning, we had uh, media and some uh, gas here. We had some CO2 cannons, smoke guns, and we tried to make some pretty cool. We, we launched with the video. And then I gave a, a, a very quick um, presentation about the features. So that, that what, that's what happened and was the kind of the mystery that we built here. Okay. Uh, for someone who's maybe not familiar with the Momentum, what is uh, what sets it apart compared to a traditional uh, plant? Yes. So Momentum is the only planter in the world that measures its own weight. Inside the rims, we're measuring the weight of the planter in the wings and in the center. And we are automatically, intelligently reacting to that. We have a self-adjusting weight transfer. So we precisely transfer all that massive weight from the, the tanks in the center to the wings so you have good weight distribution we automatically inflate and deflate the tires so if you're planting or if you're roading if it's heavier if it's light we automatically inflate the tires and we have no pinchos no matter how many acres you plant zero pinchos in the field so when we have all these compaction management features that you can only find in momentum it allows us to carry the largest tanks in the industry. 100 bushel seed, 
800 gallons in the 30 foot segment that's the biggest that the industry has and the last one and i cannot forget about it our vct the three independent fluctuating two bars that copy the topography the terrain so you can place the seed in the right spot and have even emergence okay. and if i'm not mistaken the momentum comes uh, outfitted with precision meters is that correct precision from the factory v set v drive delta force that is absolutely mandatory and there are some additional options conceal but precision is embedded in the machine since the design where the engineers were were talking okay all right, now it's offered in a 30-foot splitter planter. Yes, we have. We always had the 40 and the 60. Now we have a 12 row 30 and a 23 row 15. Okay. We'll start pre-selling them April of 24, and we'll deliver the first units December of 24. Okay. All right. Well, hey, Arthur, I appreciate it. Uh, good catching up with you. Cool, man. Good talk to you, Brian. Big towers on that. LSWs. These some LSWs. Can you hear the slides? Get it out with plastic. Got like a three inch solid pin that it turns on. Is the easy up going to survive? Oh. Oh. Make life a lot of easier. Go up to it. <laughs> All of it. Right. Really? Do you dry it? We had to run it through the bin and just run air across. Air on. We got. Hey Zach. So what was your name? Dylan? Dylan, where are you from? I'm from Illinois. Is this your first time in the Farm Progress show? Uh, no, I've been up in the one in Moon. Okay, well, you having a good time? Yeah. Uh, I drove, I did the test drive of the new KCI 715. I feel like probably one of like maybe 100 people in this whole place that's rode that tractor so far. Uh, so stopping at the Underforth booth uh, over here with Andy and Andy, what's a little bit different about this uh, equalizer track system we have here in front of us? Looks like it's got a little bit of a different architecture to it. Yeah, it does. This is our new Equalizer SP that we're debuting at the Farm Progress Show. Uh, this is the biggest grain cart track that we've built year to date. It's got a 172 inch long footprint and that's from hub to hub on the, on the end wheels. And it's 50 inches wide. So it goes on our big 2,000 and 2,500 bushel grain carts. And one of the unique things about this track is the oscillation in both the bogey wheels and in the end wheels. As you can see on the display here, we're hugging the surface of the ground, even though we have the hump going across the middle, which is keeping the entire footprint of that track on the ground to, to optimize flotation. And we still keep the equalizer tradition of the whole track cambering side to side to follow the crowns on the road or different contours in the field. Gotcha. So is that the kind of track system you're gonna see standard on this big, uh, was that 2598? Yep. Yep, this is our 2598 to 2500 bushel grain cart. Um, this track will be an option on here. We have numerous tracks available, but it'll become a popular feature on the larger grain carts just for the flotation and, you know, the maneuverability through the field. Okay. Okay. All right, Andy. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. So one of the skid steer brands we've been kind of looking at from the corner of our eyes is a Takahuchi. So we got a set in one. Still have never ran one white. Run the JCB, trying to. So walk around Farm Progress, I noticed that there was a 715 quad track sitting on the case lot, and I thought to myself, I don't remember there being a 715 quad track before this week. So bumped into Tom Curley, and he's going to tell us a little bit about this. Machine. So Tom, when was this machine launched? Is this new for this show? Yep. So this is the official global launch as of yesterday here at Farm Progress 2023, the new Steiger 715 quad track. This is also, uh, as you can tell with a bigger number on the hood, a very different looking quad track. This tractor is the new Case Eye styling and includes uh, a lot of other nice, nice features in that design. And underneath it is a new purpose-built for the Steiger product line, 
FPT 16 liter twin turbocharged engine. It's capable of 715 horsepower rated, 778 horsepower peak. Okay. And we're putting all that power to the ground through an updated transmission, heavier duty 16 by two transmission, a heavier duty axle, and then the undercarriage here is all new, uh, developed here at our, at our, at our Case IH uh, facility in Fargo, North Dakota. Steiger plant and so building on 27 years of, of quad track technology we have the latest version of our undercarriage which is the HD quad track undercarriage it features a larger drive wheel longer track about 12 inches longer track a larger footprint and then this uh, this new undercarriage lets our tractors or the 715 models go 26.5 miles an hour down the road okay and that's up from the previous uh, 22 is that right yep we're about 20 23.8 okay 20. on the current tractors okay. Gotcha. yep okay and, and so we also have as part of this this new model we have larger fuel tanks 520 gallon fuel tank we have the new modier 2024 cab that has a lot of nice updates with display mounting uh, a, a premium sound system with a 6.5 5 inch subwoofer and, uh, and tweeters and amplified speakers and the headliner. We also have uh, the new headlights combined with the lighting package on the cab and the rear fenders. We are actually all putting about 30% more light lumens, so about 78,000 lumens um, compared to our current. Well, uh, looking at the lights, they look pretty huge just in the front end of the machine, let alone the, the LEDs yeah, all we, around we, it. We put a lot of focus. Guys are running longer hours at night, trying to get more done in the tight windows in the spring, and that's what this tractor is all about. It, it's about more productivity, um, so we're able to pull implements faster, deeper, or a combination of the two. Having a lot of great experiences with customers this last spring and the last couple years on field test. Uh, just, just getting the general feedback consistently that, hey, I'm, I'm finally able to pull some of the implements on my farm today at the speed I want to or the depth I want to. Yeah. And that's your big high-speed discs, your big disc grippers. If you're into Canada, your big dr drills, you know, up to 1,300 bushel carts, 86, 100 uh, foot wide by drills so a lot of excitement around the tractor we've been been price books have been out since june okay and and so we're, we're ready to put this tractor in the market and uh we're ready to start building in, in january february time frame in q1 of next year so we'll be delivering some tractors for 2024. so can someone order one now then yeah go to your, go to your local case ih dealer talk to your salesman and they're able to quote these tractors right now actually starting in june okay a couple questions i had from the machine uh, what's the weight of the machine so our, our max ballast is listed at 72,000 pounds, okay. but, but that, that really is intended to be able to add extra weight where it's needed in like Western Canada. They're trying to climb big hills with the big trains yep. that they're pulling up there. Um, down into the, the Corn Belt, the, the, the Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Wisconsin, you know, up into the Dakotas through Minnesota. Um, we're really seeing guys and, and, and gals that are, that are out there, they're, they're looking for more speed okay and in that yeah. case we're not really needing to weight the tractor up as much we're, we're right in the mid 60s okay nicely optioned full okay. of fuel okay so um it's, it's a good fit and it, it's a really maneuverable tractor the dimensions are almost the same as our current quad track so it still fits in one narrow narrow with the traffic and okay gets down, down the road nice and easy great maneuverability still one other question um, what um are you able to get this tractor with wheels or is it just a track machine so, at the so moment? The, great question. The 715 quad track is, it's a quad track only. We do not have a wheeled variant of this tractor at this time. Okay. And I, I think I noticed three point PTO in the back of this one. So yep. is that an option on? Uh, yep. Yep. Okay. P PTO is optional and also is our three point hitch. We released a brand new uh, three point hitch for our, our wide frame Steiger tractors and Modier 23. So starting production earlier this year. And that new hitch is on this tractor here at the show today. And that is, is, uh, capable of all 715 horsepower pulling your three-point three point hitch implements. Okay, awesome. All right, well, Tom, hey, I appreciate the yeah, it's been appreciate fun. time. Thanks. Great. So the big question some of you are going to be wondering is, does it have def? Because there is a cutoff for where if you have so many horsepower, you don't need def. This one does have def. I believe that cutoff is 750 or 775 horse. It says 715, so this is a def machine but I believe some of the emissions are a little bit different for higher horsepower stuff, but it does still have depth. Send that to your wife. It's our happy anniversary. Yeah, it's not gonna find the price tag. Time to get some food at the Salford booth.
Might be some after hours activities happening at the moment. <laughs> Well, folks, this is day three of Farm Progress Show. We are seeing a few things last minute, and then we are heading back to Ohio. One place I had not been yet is the horse booth. So, for those of you who don't know, we have an avatar very similar to that one right there. Go over here and check out a few things. Kind of intrigued by their new sprayer. And, uh, yeah, see what we can learn today. Kind of interested in some of their tillage equipment, too. One thing nice about horse, got me a new horse hat, and I got it handed to me by Lucas Horse. It was the son of the guy that started this company. So pretty neat. Uh, not a whole lot of companies around here that, you know, someone with the name is the one uh, handing out hats. Pretty cool. Oh, there is one. That's what we need to start looking at. Golf carts. There's the deer display. Lots of lots of traffic through there. Supposedly deer has a very large quad track coming down the pipe, but it's not here. Otherwise, we could check it out. Yeah, doing some last minute shopping. But what we've been what we've been seeing, so we designed this product for a short crop, sparse crop, or down to get that picked up all across that cutter bar. But what we're finding on your heavy bushel beans, this is absolutely spectacular. On those heavy bushel beans, when you have that single point that comes down right down the center, that's that stalk or stem. It's not going to pause off. Where this is pulling more of those pods in yeah. across that cutter bar. So every third one, it's, it's, it's every third one. You want to go every third time. So those just clamp right over your existing yep. tooth? Yep, so no tools required, required Brian. You can them around whatever you want. Just, uh, okay. just snap them right on. Good. Do you ever have any of them come off in the field? Okay. No, no. Yep, that'll be coming home with us. That looks pretty freaking handy. This gets your mount hitch real tiny, but uh, quite effective, I'd imagine. They have a dampener on the back side. Okay, so it's like a mattress. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's got that nice soft cush to it. Yeah. So when that cob falls off, it reduces. And it, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it reduces that blow that that, that cob that cob has when it hits that deck plate. As a result, reduces the amount of corn shadow you get. The corn shadow that you do have, these brushes that are attached to the fingers, mm -hmm. are going to pull those kernels up and drop them into the, the trucks. So how long will the brushes last? You're looking about uh, 150 acres per roll. But here's the thing. This setup is $195 per roll. You look at the competition. Over a uh, thousand, isn't it? Yield 360 is $760 a roll. Harvest sweep, I think, is around at $1,500 to $1,600 a roll. So, are you excited? Yeah. Best part of the whole show. Hopefully, they got a pie. Start. You hear the hit miss, you know you're in the right spot. At least you got ice cream. They do have ice cream. So, one thing catching on my mind when we pulled in was this 62 foot draper head. <laughs> That's a, it's a long one. That's a lot of knives. A lot of sections. That's not cheap, but that's actually more reasonable than I was expecting. Weight-wise, too. So they got a fine Massey Ferguson tractor pulling their, uh, what do they got there? A ditcher? Planer? Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so I tracked down Mike Miller with GTS, and he's gonna give us a little bit of background about uh, GTS as a company and some of the products they're bringing to the show. Yep. Hi guys, I'm Mike Miller, Director of Sales for GTS in North America. Uh, we actually uh, were showing off, unveiling our 62-foot Draper. It's the largest in the world, and uh, a little bit about GTS is, is uh, they are, they're a Brazilian company, They've been producing corn heads for 23 years and the Draper here now for eight years. It's, uh, we'd love for you guys to come check us out and reach out to us at GTS-NA. We appreciate it and look forward to talking to you guys. All right, I appreciate it, Mike. Thank you. Yeah, so aluminum, <laughs> aluminum frame, steel units. Very interesting. For a gleaner combine, this would be pretty, uh, pretty attractive for a folder just because they're so much lighter. I think we've seen it all. I think we're going home. You ready to go home? I'm ready to go home. 